Meantime, a battle over flood recovery. Regional health and education has emerged on the far north coast of New South Wales. Let's bring in Lucy Gray, who's there. She's in the Nationals held seat of Tweed. Lucy, what sort of themes are coming through there on the ground in terms of the big issues affecting that seat? Well, there are a number of issues that are coming forward from voters that we're speaking to here at this polling booth. This is one of three national battleground seats here in Tweed. It's held on a small margin of 5% by local MP Jeff Provost, and he's held this seat since 2007, and he's running for another term. This Tweed was badly affected by record floods last year, so issues like rebuilding community infrastructure, regional health, education, and, of course, homelessness are really some of the top issues for voters in this region. When it comes to candidates, the Nationals are facing a dual threat, one from Labor and one from the Greens. Now, we spoke to the ALP candidate last hour, uh, Craig Elliott, and he is running for the second consecutive year. He was obviously unsuccessful in 2019. And when we spoke to him, he was very critical of the current Nationals MP. He accused him of Taking, not being, not taking enough action to help the people in this region. He thinks that the Nationals MP Jeff Provost is a weak voice for the people of Tweed. Here's what he had to say. At the end of the day, Tweed and broadly New South Wales needs that fresh start. It's a tired government. Jeff's been here for 16 years. He's arson locals for 20 years. He hasn't got a plan. Let's bring in the incumbent, Jeff Provost, for his response. Jeff, you're holding this seat on a margin of 5%. It's quite small. How confident are you that you can hold on? Oh, look, I think you get judged on your performance over the last four years, and, and we've delivered the largest regional hospital in, in the state of New South Wales, 720 million. We've got 120 million being invested in our schools at the moment. And also our environmental credentials are, are really good too, uh, with chlamydia, with koalas, and also to sea turtles. So there's a whole package there, including public transport. We're in negotiations with Queensland at the moment to bring the light rail here. So for Labor to say we've been a weak voice, We've probably been one of the best performing regions in the whole of New South Wales. So there's a lot of political spin, but I more deal in with reality. We promised and we delivered. And the good thing with the new hospital, Lucy, is the fact it's got free car parking. Now, there's not too many hospitals that have got free car parking. So there's a whole package. Our seniors' card's very popular here, uh, and also our new apprentices' card. So it's a whole package. It's just not idle politics. And the other side will say things like that. But it's about delivering for the people. They don't care about politics. They deal about the issue, and they deal about the result with it. And you say you deal with reality. We know homelessness is a big issue. We know we're seeing a lot of frontline workers leave New South Wales to go to Queensland for better pay conditions. What are you going to do well, to mediate those issues? That's, that's a little bit of a fallacy. There recently we have 400 odd nurses at our hospital. Uh, there was an extra payment, a retention payment, and all of them actually signed up. Uh, to it. So the Labor likes to spin the fact that we're losing firemen, we're losing paramedics, we're losing nurses. There are, there are some pay differences, but the government, my government, is actually making up the difference there. So we haven't seen this mass exodus. That's, once again, that's political spin designed to create fear. Labor's a specialty in creating fear. And with homelessness, I mean, following the floods, we know a lot of people are still be rebuilding. They haven't had their homes raised. I mean, what are you going to do to help them? Oh, look, there's, there's very incentives out there. We've still got around uh, a couple of hundred living in pods, temporary accommodation. Uh, recently, we opened another 50 units in a $20 million uh, tower that we've actually built. So I think we need to look at the planning issues here as well. Like, I don't support any more further development on floodplains. I was out to my knees in mud and out in the boat during the floods. And yeah, we just need to release some more land and, and get it. But on the North Coast, development's always a, a, a cloudy word. So, but I'd like to do more in, in that regards. And job, all our job is just to keep the people safe. And just finally, one of Labor's key criticisms is that there's a disconnect between the regions and the metropolitan areas. We know Dominic Perrottet hasn't visited Tweed this election campaign. Why has he been absent? Oh, look, he, ha he hasn't visited, but Paul, too, my leader, has been here numerous times. There's no disconnect. In fact, the regions are far better off under the coalition government than the Labor. Labor has now mooted they're going to sack our uh, regional health minister, they're going to cut back on the funding of better, stronger communities. So that's what we're scared in the regions. Uh, we're going to be ignored. I've been in politics long enough, four years on opposition with Labor, and I tell you what, under opposition with Labor, you get nothing. You absolutely get nothing, and under the coalition, we are flourishing.
All right, thank you so much for your time, Jeff. So there you have it. That's Jeff Provost, the incumbent here in Tweed. Now, if you look at the federal election results, Labor should have a good chance at snatching this seat, but with a strong Greens vote and, of course, the optional preferential voting, the Nats do still have a chance of holding on. So it would be interesting to see if those traditional national voters here in Tweed stick or jump ship. Not long until all is revealed. Lizzie Gray, thank you for the update. Live there from Tweed. Well, the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, has been attending polling booths across New South Wales today. He's obviously been supporting state Labor candidates. The Prime Minister hey, cast guys. his vote early this morning at Debroid Point. He later joined the federal member for Benelong, Jerome Lexar, at the ballots in West Ryde to campaign for the Labor candidate for Ryde, Lyndall Howison. The Prime Minister met local constituents, sated a democracy sausage and posed for pictures. Ms Howson is competing with the new Liberal candidate, Jordan Lane. The MP Victor Dominello has represented the seat since 2008, but he is retiring. Ryde is a safe Liberal seat. It's on an 8.9% margin held by the Liberals for the past 15 years. It's a coalition-held uh, seat. It's a Liberal-held seat. Uh, this isn't my first visit to this seat. I've been here before uh, for two reasons. One, for the cause of Labor. Uh, and uh, I, I, I'm a Labor true believer, uh, but secondly also, Lindell in particular, I just think is outstanding. It's time for a change of government and I hope that happens today. And do tune in to Sky News from 5pm tonight. We'll have the biggest and best coverage of the New South Wales election night live for you. You can see on our screen our all-star lineup. They're going to be bringing you rapid results and fired up debates.